How long you been waiting for that one? A long time. It's been a long time. Um, I remember the, the last chance I had at picking one, and I dropped it. And that's been almost seven years. So I had to make sure I capitalized today. Second oldest player in NFL history to record your first interception. Just that's made me seem, Elias. You just made deal. me seem old, but <laughs> I, nah, not at all. I tell everybody I'm like fine wine. I just get better with time. I like that. You guys got off the field tonight on third down. I think they may have had only one first down. What was the difference tonight? Was it passion? Was it scheme? What was the difference? Um, to be honest, man, like, as a, the older guys on the team, we came together and we were just like, man, enough is enough. Um, let's just play team football. Let's play the way we know how to play. And um, let's go out here and get a one, win. And the most important thing for us is just we want to get back to Bucks. Bucks type of football. We don't want to beat Bucks. JGP said you kind of saw that play coming. Yeah, we kind of went over it a lot this week, and uh, my defensive line coach Casey Rogers, he kept saying they always like to do a throwback. So make sure you stay back home. And every time this week that I seen it, I stayed back home. And I was trying to tell the other guys, saying, "Man, we got to stay back home because they like to do the throwback." And as soon as I seen the quarterback gaining grinds and turning his shoulder back to the other side, and I was, it's like, hey. I'm here. <laughs> Last week, there were a lot of third and shorts you were dealing with. How important was it to stop people on first and second down tonight? It's always very important. It's not just about last week or the week before or any other week. It's always very important. When you take the field, you got to take the field with the, with the passion of, man, I'm stopping everyone. We stopping everyone. And I think that's what we did. We come, we had, we, my biggest thing, what I love, we had complimentary football. Offense did their thing. Um, special teams did what they were supposed to do. Defense did what we were supposed to do. So we come out of here victorious with a team win. What's the key to getting that passion out of everybody? Because Coach was saying all week long that was something that was missing in that loss to Washington. And, and you being one of the older guys on the team, how do you bring that out to your teammates? I mean, you just always prepare. For me, personally, just stay ready so you never have to get ready. Um, so you, what you do is, I always say, an old guy, old guy grab a young guy. And if, if we grab a young guy and we could continue to uplift and encourage him to keep going and pushing through adversity, then it helps us get that sense of, hey, man, we're like this big brother here, so we have to do his things, like the necessary things to help him out. And they end up helping us. It makes you feel good. I know for me personally, it just makes me feel good when I, I can help someone else. And the one thing we noticed this week, and it's been for the past couple of weeks, we starting to do things, you know, the way that we want desire to do them. Coach Bowles wants us to play fast. He wants us to play hard. But most importantly, he wants us to play smart. And I think that's what we did tonight. We came out here, played extremely fast. We came out here, played extremely hard. And the most important thing that we did, I think we played extremely smart. Considering how you came into the league undrafted, the number of times you got cut in Pittsburgh, how do you describe reaching this point in your career at 35 where you're still a productive player? Um, I tell everybody, man, I was an undrafted trial free agent. I mean, it don't matter how you get here. It just matters about what you do when you get the opportunity. I never, I never worried about the next day. I just stayed in the moment. And um, I prepare. I work my tail off. <laughs> my, my wife can tell you. Uh, my family can tell you. My friends. Matter of fact, I own a gym. So all I did was just continue to work. That's all I know how to do is work. So. I don't really get caught up in anything that can take my focus. I live by a code. The code I live by is called the Focus Driven Life Code. And if I stay focused, I stay driven, understand I have one life, then I can accomplish anything I put my mind to. And that's, that's exactly what I've been doing my whole entire career. I don't care how I came here. I know I'm here now. And I have done it for a long time. <laughs> you sound a little bit like a coach. That's something we think about doing. I do coach. I coach in the offseason. I have like youth football teams. and. Like I said, I, I coach all the time, man. Um, for me, it's just the passion of the game. It's passion of seeing people do good. Then once you get them over that borderline of being good, now you teach them how to be great. You, you remember if you had to pick a Troy, you know? No, I had a fumble recovery for like 80 yards, and I fell like five yards. I was tired. My coach kept making me stay out there. He was like, stay out there. Then I remember one time I tapped my head. He turned his head away from me. <laughs> the next play was a, it was a, like a sack fumble. And I picked it up and I ran for like 80 yards. And 
I remember I was so tired. Uh, the receiver just dove in front of my leg, and I just fell. I was like, I can't make it to the end zone. <laughs> Anything else? Great. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it.